Howdy do. How's it going out there? Bananas here. Thanks for asking. I've got all manner of things going on in this shop space and my new studio space at home that's being built. But today I'm here to share month four of welcome home with you. Um, lots of times I go through all the fussy cutting and show you how to fussy cut. I feel like you've got that. There is one tip I'm going to give you about this one big piece but I'm gonna let the instructions guide you through that this time because you've gotten good at this. I just know you have, I trust you. Um, instead, after I show you that one tip, I'm gonna focus on applique of those scallops because I feel like that's maybe where some nervous, nervousness might be coming in um, for some of you. And I'm gonna show you three different methods. Um, one is completely by hand and two are by machine. So you can take your pick. Um, but for this month, the four fabrics that we are working with is this pretty pink and red version of the New York print. And we are going to be working with this beautiful emerald green background version of the purse. And we're going to be working on these two shades of Patras. And up on the quilt, I can show you those two shades of Patras come in here. So we're going to be cutting these long borders. Um, for that inner border. And we're gonna be sewing the um, applique scallops onto those pieces. And then we're gonna be cutting that long, that's all one piece of Perth, as well as this piece of New York, and sewing that applique on, okay? So just take your time sewing the applique whenever you get to it. Um, but I did wanna give you one tip uh, because I can never um, pass up an opportunity to use painter's tape in my sewing <laughs> and to like kind of rig grids to make them work for me. Um, so these pieces of Patras, truck, can you hear the truck? These pieces of Patras, I believe the length on those are 45 inches and the width is nine and a half. I don't have a nine and a half inch grid. I have an eight and a half inch grid. So look what I did. I actually just marked um or i lined up the one inch mark with the edge of it to basically just kind of give myself nine and a half inches from here to here and that's going to help me mark and kind of slide um down on the length but i want to tell you just um the little trick that i did to get those centered so as with a lot of my fussy cutting requirements um, i'm asking you to kind of center an element but the beauty in fussy cutting fabric designs such as mine is that I very rarely are giving you art on the fabric that is really graphically perfect. In other words, like all the petals are not the same size. The circle in the center of the flower might not be exactly in the center. So if anything, that should give you a little bit of leeway with what center actually is. Okay. So the idea is that we want three big flowers generally centered. Okay. So instead of cutting out a big or drawing one big long 45 inch line, also a little bit tricky. What I did was I decided where the center was gonna be, okay? Um, as basically like this, we'll call this, see this is a little off center, that's a little center. I'm kind of calling this darker blue bit right here as the center. So I just decided Okay, that's my center. I'm gonna draw some little marks there and there. And then what I can do is take my grid and measure 22 and a half inches this way, okay? Because it's 45 total. And then I can, um, and I also am gonna get it centered as much as I can this way. That is gonna cut off just a tiny little bit of flower, top and bottom, but that's fine. As long as you're cutting off about the same amount, you're good, okay? Keeping in mind where, what you're calling center. So I found it easier to decide where the center is and then mark off 22 and a half that way and then mark off 22 and a half that way. And I just keep like making marks and sliding down. And I actually went ahead and drew the whole thing out um, just so I could have a second look at it before I've taken a rotary to it. Um, so that, you know, just in case I'm like, oh, I actually want it to be a little bit higher. Okay, so little trick, I'm not gonna cut it for you. You know how to use your cutting tools. So let me get this slightly out of the way. 
Um, let's focus now on the scallops. So if you, I believe we have already cut scallops. Yeah, we've already cut the scallops in a previous month. I don't remember which month. If this were 12 months, I would have absolutely no memory. <laughs> it's only five months and I still can't remember what month is what. Um, method number one is by hand, okay? I wanna show you some of this up close and personal. This is one method, okay? So you can see here that I've already cut out the scallop and you can see the line that I traced from my handy dandy template. So that edge has seam allowance included at the bottom here. So that goes all the way to the bottom when you're setting it onto this border piece, okay? Um, so this one is, um, I marked it with a line, but I went on top and I actually stitched a basting, a basting line right on top of my drawn line. And I'm gonna show you what happens after I've done that. So this is one of my favorite methods. If you've ever taken an applique class with me, um, let me get this out of the way so Callan can cuddle in here with me. Um, so what I do when I have it basted is, I'm gonna pop my readers on here, nerdy girl, is I take out about an inch or so of basting at a time, okay, to loosen it up. Now, do I have to have the basting there? No, I don't, I could glue it, but I really like how the basting keeps it exactly where I want it until I'm ready to come to it and turn on that line. And even if I hadn't traced the line, even if I had just basted it a quarter inch away from the edge, the stitch marks from the machine needle would tell me where to turn. But this is how I prep for doing hand applique. At least this is one of the methods that I use. It's my favorite one. Okay, so I've taken a couple stitches. All right, so instead of having pins poking you, if you've made this a mobile piece, you know, and you're taking it around with you to house or soccer or wherever you're going with your applique, you don't have to have any pins. All you need is a seam ripper and needle and thread, and this is prepped and ready to go with you anywhere. And you just remove the stitches as you go around the piece, okay? So, um, and I am gonna show you in just a second how I got that centered on here too, that scallop on the border. So that is handwork method number one. Number two, is by machine with an interfacing backing. So let me pull this out here and show you. This started the same way the previous scallop started and that was it's all been trimmed out a quarter inch away from this drawn line up top, okay? Now what I've done is I've laid a piece of non-woven, um, so in other words, it's just that kind of fibery material, it's not stretchy and it's not fabric. It doesn't give at all and that's what you want. But it is a little see-through, which is really nice. I've laid that on top and I've also traced the pencil lines onto that interfacing as well. And so then I can take this and go just pin it all the way down just so it doesn't move and I'm going to machine sew it right on that drawn line. And then once it's sewn, you can trim all this out and cut little um, kind of notch marks inside those spaces pretty close to the point, but not all the way up to it. And then you can just basically flip this back on itself, right side out, kind of like you would a pillow or any sort of like outer shape and get it all nice and smooth and pressed. And then all your seam allowances are turned back, perfect. Never had to like press an edge or anything like that. Never had to turn it down by hand. This is all, so it's basically you've given it its own backing, you've given it its own facing. So that's a really handy thing to do. Um, and if you wanna take that bulk out, once you have this turned back all the way and it's all smooth and pressed, you could go back in and cut away that, um, that, that this fiber material, I don't know what to call it, interfacing? I guess it's interfacing. <laughs> so um, lots of different ones on the market. So as long as you can see through it, as long as it's not stretchy, and as long as it doesn't have any gluey, fusible part to it, that will work, okay? So that's machine sewing method. 
the first one. The second one will end looking like this. So this one, I traced this onto the fabric after I had already backed it with fusible. So I backed this fabric with a fusible product. Okay, so I had a rectangle all fused. And then I laid this on, traced it out and cut right on the line because these are actually raw edges, but look how nice and tidy they look. Okay, so once I had it cut out, um, fused, then cut, I just pressed it onto here so it's stuck onto that border, okay? And then I just did a very small little, um, what do we call this stitch again? <laughs> a couching stitch, sort of. Um, a satin stitch, an applique stitch, whatever you want to call it. It depends on if you're talking about handwork or machine work, but I kind of call it like a couch stitch. But I just did really short length of my stitches and just made sure that the needle dropping on the outside always dropped on the outside of the shape. That's the best thing to do so that you don't want it dropping right in there because that'll kind of encourage the fabric splitting apart on the edge, okay? So always try to work to get your needle to drop just into the background and those little legs that jump over are what's holding your scallops in place. As well as the fusible. But let me show you how I got here and how I placed um, the border centered. So here's another piece, and this is just like where we started. So this is, has fusible on the back of it. It was all pressed on first, and then I traced and cut it out. So it's exactly the same shape. Okay, this still has the paper backing on it. And what I'm gonna do is take the, the paper backing off of it, okay? So I usually do that by scoring it with a pen or a needle instead of picking at the edge of it. That allows you so satisfied. It's like peeling glue off the palm of your hand in the third grade. Okay, so you peel that all off, discard. Or maybe you have a great use for that. I have never found one. Um, okay, so my next goal is to just center this on here where I want it. Now, I didn't get out a ruler for this because again, Nothing here started perfect, so the whole process doesn't have to be about like utter measurement perfection. Um, get out your rulers if you want to. You can turn me off and go get your rulers. But what I did is I kind of decided to place and press half at a time. Again, just like marking just half at a time. When you're dealing with a length like, th like this, I just decided like, let me find my center. I'm gonna find my center by folding this in half, okay? So I've got that folded in half. I make sure my crease is all the way up here. So I've got this folded in half. I'm gonna put it on the ironing board here. Try not to block what we're doing with the iron. I've got that folded in half now. Okay, so this is what we're calling the center, is that crease. And then this piece, I am also going to fold in half. Okay, but I'm gonna go back the other way so that the wrong sides are showing. And put a little fold right there. And I'm gonna lay it down just there. Make sure that no part of the other side of the fold is kind of sticking out here because you don't wanna glue it to the other side. Just make sure that the right side of this Patras fabric is showing. Butt that up against the edge. Get your folds lined up with one another and then hold it in place. Make sure you don't let it slip away. Don't slip away. And we're just gonna press right here to get it fused. How cool is that? And then just go kinda close to the fold, not past it. You don't wanna fuse the scallop to your ironing board. <laughs> Done that already. And then you can kinda just open it up Drop it out oh, and press the rest of it. Just get it nice and smooth. Okay, so that's how that machine applique process started. And once that's all pressed really well, you can take it to your machine and perform whatever stitching you would like to do on it, okay? Now, I will say that 
if you haven't done a lot of machine applique and um, you're not very familiar with how your machine behaves and where the needle drops, just take um, some scrap fabric, um, a couple thicknesses because you want to mimic what you're sewing through and um, practice some stitches, practice changing the width, the lengths, um, and kind of take note of where on the machine that, or where on the width of your foot that needle is dropping and maybe just draw yourself a line on that scrap and pretend like it's the edge of the fabric so you can follow the stitching around. Um, but the rest of the cutting is very straightforward and next month, not only am I gonna show you how to assemble all this, how to do those miters, but I'm also going to share with you some of the extra projects that we have um, designed for you to use all the amazing scraps from Welcome Home. So I hope that was helpful and fun, and I've been loving watching your progress or your finishes already on the project, and I will see you next time. Happy sewing. Bye-bye.